make you not think about my voice, but make you not think about the song when I want to sing. Four years don't work out. We still they carry go, nobody waka, nobody go solo. Baba God yo, our case yo, na your grace yo, adupe yo. When Style Plus then sing this song from the album when they call Back and Better, some people could just reason and say, ah, this song, it make me you know. And I remember the time when I graduate from the University of Nigeria. We sing this song because with the time Baba God say, we start and we don't finish. This is not the turn of those when they're inside government to sing this song. And I go speak big English. What do we go witness for inside of Odo Nigeria tomorrow, May 29? Go really show say, power they transient. That what I mean, say. Power they flow like water. Today, you feel be governor. Tomorrow, you feel the inside detention of EFCC. Hey! I say, make I talk this one now. Because... If we calculate now, we get some people when we say they don't complete their eight years for office as our constitution don't talk. Some people they complete four years, like in the case of Lagos, and then they go, another person they enter. But you must get them for mind. Say, you there 2015, you go enter 2016, you go enter 2017, you go enter 2018, and you go enter 2019. Every day, your excellency, your excellency, your excellency. Tomorrow they will call you past. Past, past. So this one, now lesson when I want to make everybody learn. On that note, I say welcome to that Ogonga Politic Discussion Show. I see their heart. Where all the action today, when they come and smoke inside Nigeria political boxing ring, who they discuss them. Today, best of all, say we do like celebration for Nigeria. I go tell you now, say happy Democracy Day Eve. <laughs> because now tomorrow, that be Democracy Day. And first, government don't declare public holiday. <laughs> so... Una must day house tomorrow. Yes, you will be papa. When we say your own plan to go drink beer, I lie. <laughs> to lie to your wife, say, I have extra work, I lie. Abdurrahman Dambazao, the minister for interior, don't declare tomorrow public holiday. So, mama, hope papa for shirt. Papa, hope mama for rapper. Everybody must day out with the children. I una know. Now, Wazobia Max, Wazobia TV, Naim Una must day watch. Once again, happy Democracy Day in advance. Make I go enter the nitty gritty, or even we call them nitty gritty of our discussion. Today on top of us in the auto, now when I get the show, when I go call and talk on our mind. Now, yesterday, May 27, President Mohamed Buhari, for the first time in a long while, he sit down with new story person. When he ask some question and he answer has to take concern in the first four years and the plan for the next four years. During the course of this show, we go play the whole video for now. Make una watch. Una no say Wazobia Max. We say now we be the voice of the street, the voice of the people. We capture our life. We bring them to now yesterday 10 p.m. But today I go give una again so that una go use una ear hear them. On top of our videos with the talk say make you not be say eh, one person talk, that person talk. Don't let them use talk. Collect your stew. As you they hear them, think calm. As you they think calm, act upon them. If you know, teach your neighbor. If you don't know, ask questions. But most importantly, watch and see the heart. Anybody will miss this show. Oh, I want to talk something. Oh. As now they watch this show, I'm gonna enjoy it <laughs> because very because make cannot talk. Make I just go straight into the action story where we carry come. Our first story get to do with matter when we say we don't talk for a very long time. When I don't say yesterday on May 27th, and the full world they celebrate Children's Day. Hey. I say make I take silence so that now we know the way when they see they pay me. The Nigerian Union of Teachers don't come out, they cry. Oh, they cry in ego. What did they cry? They say, as Nigeria, they like this. Say, the standard of education for Nigeria, in all the hospital, they receive blood. They say, you know, the mortuary, where then they prepare to bury them. They say, this cemetery, they don't bury them already. Hey! They say, out of the 36 states, when they inside the border Nigeria, only eight, make good they hear me, out of the 36 states, when they inside the border Nigeria, only eight, and if I come out these eight, how many remain? 28. They say, since 2015, four years, only eight don't employ new teachers. 
to enter, they teach our children them when they primary school. They said the remaining 28, they don't employ one single teacher to teach our children inside primary school. I beg you, hear what they talk. 36 states inside Oboro, Nigeria. Only eight employ teacher to go to teach for primary school. 28 states for this country, there are no employed teacher today. I go call the name of those eight states when employed teacher. And I go cut cap, give them, even though now they are work. But I will cut cap, give them the remaining 28. I go sing shame, 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 shame. Whoa, 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 big coconut head. Because he be like, say, I don't understand. The commissioners for education, the governor, and all those people. He be like, say, I don't know what to do. They do. Primary school will be the foundation. We're picking leg more strong. 28 states in four years, no employee single teacher. And we get teachers when they retire. Retire means that you don't work the mandatory number of years, 35, and you don't go house, go rest. If you now read this story here, this thing will bring tears come on our eyes. Some schools, the number of children when they're in the schools, if you can't check the number of teachers, it get one school when I read about the school there for rural area. Now crime say picking the rural area. By rural, I mean all those village, urban, now place like city. Now crime say picking grow up for rural area. Say some schools get only three teachers. And these teachers there, some they come twice a week. They go say no be their fault. Then they live where they very, very far. Wait, what it? No, wait. What it be the I go, I go eat my head for this table. Oh. I go eat my head for this table. Oh. What it be the future of the Nigerian Pekin? When we go get 1,000 and, you get one when I read, 1,007 uh, pupils there in the school, the teachers now only 10. Some of them go join the class, them together. How the children, they won't learn. How we know what the UNESCO talk. The number of children, when they so, always suppose they inside class. So now crime now, say, person, they go public school. This same public school, when we say, Baba, we we'll we'll do free education. And some of you, now these governors, them. Now this public school, now I'm gonna go. Now I'm gonna learn. We're gonna go school on scholarship. And you go there four years. You don't go employ primary school teacher. If no, I go, no, I go hit my head for this table. So I beg, I don't want to go through this number. Uh, they say somebody, he don't work 30 years, now headmaster. If they collect 30,000. Hey, God. God, oh. Somebody go, headmaster, 30,000. You don't work 30 years. How you go take the children? He don't get family. When a woman die, and we call him here, say, because of say, some, some states. Ah, Kogi State, Kogi State. Kogi State, Benue State. If those are carrying and catching, I'll be crying for now. Oh, Governor Samuel Otto. Governor Yaya Bello. Say, we have to pay percentage. How you going to pay the percentage? For example, pay his salary in 10,000. You go pay him 5,000. Pay him 50% of his salary. How now? Say, teacher, don't begin to say pop off for class. Teacher, don't begin to say zobo. Teacher, don't begin to say off you. Teacher, don't begin to say, go on, go on. Teacher, they say, I'm feeling inside class. Coolie, coolie. So that they're going to survive. Why? What did they happen for this country now? Eh? I'm going to say, children are the future. Children are the future. We're not no invest in education. Oh, 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 I don't want to cry today. I don't want to cry. I go to the next story because you see they pay me. But I just want to beg with the Nigerian governors. Nigerian governors, I want to do the right thing. I beg. If we don't invest in the children today, what do you think they're going to become tomorrow? Tomorrow, when they talk in Napa, Androba, insurgents, Boko Haram, eh, killer, this one, that one, when I come begin to complain. I beg, I want to do the right thing. Thank you. Now, my first story be that. Enter the next story. Hmm. This next story, now also to show us, say, when we talk, say, we get plan. Make we not just use mouth to talk, make we see action. And the reason why I talk this one is because of, say, the wife of Oga Presido, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, she don't come out, she can't cry. <laughs> when I know, I talk, say, NUT, Nigerian Union of Teachers, they cry in Igbo. Oh, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, the wife of Oga Presido, she cry in Hausa. She say, <laughs> The Kwanza say, ah, first lady, what you happen? She say, ah, the whole They say, what you happen? And she won't cry the third one. And so the whole her say, tell us what you happen. Which one? She can't talk, say, hmm. Her husband, President Mohamed Buhari, and the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, and their government, and their party, 
Then promise say they won't come out suffering for the eyes of Nigerians. Say, Professor Yemi Oshiba, you can't sit down. Based on say, Professor, when get sense, Professor, when sabi book, nobody all this other one go wrong, they drink of gold. Professor, when get sense, Professor, when sabi book, when come be man of God, he can't sit down, carry by you. He can't the right plan of how they go take, make Nigeria life better. He can't get what they call social investment program. This program, eh, they go use that and touch the life of Nigerians. Give job to people when we say they need this work. Give money to people when we say they do business. And give something when people will not get anything. Go hold so that the office survive. Hmm. She said, she the year out for news, oh. Say 500 billion, now they go put. 500 billion, now they go put. She can't come out and cry, say, she nothing, say nothing, they work, oh. She said for Adamawa State, where she come from. And Kano State, where she know people. Say she know plenty of people, we don't come and come complain, say. This thing, when we not say, we not want to do for us. We not see her, oh. She can't talk, say. She called the woman, Miriam Weiss, when they in charge. She said, you, Miriam Weiss. This thing, when you talk, say, you they do, oh. You know, they do and when. This money, when you say you collect, say they give people, you not give them, oh. Because people, they call me every day from Adamawa. They call me every day from Sokoto, uh, from Kano. I don't know of any other place, but these two places, I know. And then they complain. Make you hear them from the mouth of the wife of Oga President. Make you don't be like, say, now me talk, and they put pepper inside. The wife of Oga President. And I was expecting the social investment, 500 billion naira funds, to be utilized in a different method in order to achieve the aim, you know. But I don't know the method they used. Most of the northern states did not get the money. I don't know. My state didn't get the money, but I don't know whether you are set up to the money. It worked out well in some states, but the methods maybe should be used differently. In my own state, one local government benefited from it, that is out of 22 local governments. I didn't ask what happened, and I don't want to know. But for it to fail woefully in Kano is not a good sign. I have learned that three days ago, 12.7 billion naira was released purposely to take care of trauma cases in hospitals throughout the country. Can we please monitor and see the way the money is going to be spent? Because the ministers are living very soon. The amount is being released. So let the Ministry of Health. Hee <laughs> hee! We also write out, so that we're not going to read that book. 16 million US dollars to buy mosquito net. When I hear what she talk, not be me talk, oh. That person went there, there, not be my sister. Not be my mama. Not be my babe. That is the wife of the president, Mrs. Aisha Buhari. She used her own mouth to talk, say, for Adamawa, where she come from. One out of 22 local governments. She also talks that the thing fell woefully for Kano State. When I hear when she asks the people when they, they say, she when I don't, they say no. Not be me talk, oh, that she talk. We play on top of our city, now evidence. But when we hear the response of Miriam Weiss, the woman when we say, Naim Oga Presido put in charge of this arrangement. She herself talk her own. Make we balance her. When I don't hear the wife of Oga Presido, make we hear Mrs. Miriam Weiss. When I will call using her own sense, judge the matter. Make it not be like saying, me talk. Make we hear. Uh, Miriam Weiss. She would be able to track all the beneficiaries. I'm saying that we have over 11,000 graduates that have been recruited and are working in every local government in her home state. We have non-graduates, 440. We started the school feeding program in October 2018. We're in 1,054 primary schools, public primary schools. There are over 2,000 cooks feeding those children and these facts are verifiable we have a website that has all the data and all the information where the schools are so even if the monitors are not um, you're not willing to believe the monitors I believe it's something you can verify yourselves 
because I can give you the website and you can track them. There is a lot to be done. We have started um, and I believe that with sufficient funding, we should be able to address all of the issues. Um, it is not true that we have uh, had 500 billion to work with. Um, in 2016, we only got uh, released 80 billion of the 500 billion appropriated. The second year, we only got 140 billion released. And this year, we've got about half of the amount, 252 billion released to cover the various programs. We have four broad programs, and we have made um, a direct impact on at least 12 million beneficiaries across the country. For the NPOWER program, and these are direct, these are direct beneficiaries, indirect beneficiaries, people you know, from families, uh, people employed by others, you know, the farmers that are getting, uh, that are, have a sustainable income now from the school feeding program, the cooks that are benefiting. These amount to all, almost 30 million Nigerians. And we do have the data. We have had monitors. Um, we have action aid that actually um, sourced for civil society in every state. They just issued a, a report about a month ago confirming that these programs are going on in every state. Same thing, we have the um, ANIJ, it's the association of those CSOs that actually track and monitor recovered loot, the, the, the Abacha money that has been um, um, invested in the cash transfer program. They came up with their report about two weeks ago, and they, in, they um, interviewed almost, I think, even more than 30,000 beneficiaries in every part of this, I think 22 states. And they came up with a very good report saying all the monies have been accounted for. They spoke to them one on one. You know, I think part of the problem is um, sitting in Abuja, we really can't, the, a lot of the impact is being done in the rural areas, and unless the journalists can go and verify, um, we have all the data on our website. And this is what the civil society has been utilizing to go and reach our beneficiaries and ask them questions, engage them. We have a number of documentaries of them, how it has impacted on their lives, and so I think um, if you have, for instance, in Kano State, we have 9 million thereabouts by the NBS 2017 data citizens, and we have maybe about half of them uh, below the poverty line because we have um, statistics that say about 91 million Nigerians. We have several programs, all the programs going on in Kano. That now the voice <coughs> and the face of uh, Madame Miriam Wise, when we say now they're in charge of that arrangement, when I uh, suppose they uh, use the social pillow when they put, use cushion the body of Nigerians, made it no hit them where well, well. I played it too so that now go judge by myself. When I don't hear all the things she give, say website today, see the number of people, but when I don't also hear from the voice of the wife of Oga Presido, where she talks, say, from where she come from, oh, it not work. And the most important thing I say, my president, I want to worry. Yes, I respect you because you are tall like me. Make we ensure, say, we investigate this matter. Because tomorrow, no one day, yes, eh, we gave money. Nothing like we go give money, we don't see what the money go do. We need to only see, say, that they use the money and then they see the results. We get some messages on top of our WhatsApp. Uh, this one now from Innocent Cletus. Innocent Cletus saying they send this message from Kogi State. He's saying, congratulate our president. For the second time, when he go start tomorrow, he said go like making see plenty change for the action of Oga Presido. He saw those slow, slow things as he take consign uh, action. So make Oga Presido stop and making they see plenty action uh, for the behavior of Oga Presido. He also talk say the selection of those who go there, the cabinet of Oga Presido. So make it happen sharp, sharp. In fact, he said by tomorrow night, we suppose don't know those when we say there go be ministers inside Obodo, Nigeria. This message. Uh, uh, you know, you know, get them. He just talk, say, it's bad. 
Say now only eight states now he employ teachers for primary school out of the 36 since 2015. He said, mm, the reason why the city is not because say governor so senator so honorable say then just now they are safe they like they don't like Nigerian people. In court talk, say ah Baba Wolo wo, Baba Wolo wo, Baba Wolo wo. He say Baba Wolo wo. talk say hmm if they don't take care of the children of the poor, the children of the poor will come back tomorrow to hunt the children of the rich. Meaning say. They go come, they find them like bush meat. You know when they take the smoke bush meat, bush rat, come off for inside hole. That's how the thing go be. Make I give you our third story before I throw to our final story. Remember, I told you, I say, President Mohamed Buhari, he follow Nigerians talk yesterday. We go play the team, make you see him. Uh, this one, get to do with something when they very, very important inside of Nigeria. I neck don't come and talk, say, those people, when they say, court, say, now they win the election for inside Zamfara State. Based on, say, APC, they shoot themselves for leg. Say they don't give them certificate of return. But you get one interesting thing when it happen. He talks, say, uh, all this certificate of return when then they collect and then they give to people. Now because of say political parties, they know they hear what. They know they follow guidelines. Then they behave anyhow. And if they behave anyhow now, courts can't do the right thing. They'll come begin the complaint. Kingsley Akinsoya in the tank me say, in tank me, in raising two hands as I read this message. And another person just talks, say, that's when that woman do not be the right thing. Now, I go give you the video when President Mamadou Buhari been talk. I like make everybody sit down now. Call your papa, call your mama. Everybody sit down. They watch on the television. We go play on the fool. Make you not hear. Make you not be say tomorrow. Somebody go call them and say, he talk this one. He not talk this one. See what he talk. No. Hear about myself and judge him. I go carry Waka come out inside studio. We coming to go sit down. Cross leg and I go watch him. Tomorrow the show go hot. May 29. We go carry senator. Come inside studio. We go carry governor. Come inside studio. They go sit down and they go answer questions. When I say go call and talk on the mind of these four years and the next four years when I want to see. But when I watch this video by President Mohamed Buhari, I think they tell Nigerians in plans for the next four years inside of Bodo, Nigeria based on Aside, 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 Mona Komotana. Aside, Aside, Aside. A very big thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Let's begin from the very beginning. You came to power in 2015, promising to address Nigeria's fundamental challenges of security, economy, and corruption. You have done your best. Looking back, sir, what would you say you are most happy about? I think uh, it's a relief to the people of North East, especially, uh, for really degrading the Boko Haram. Um, if you go to the North East, you will try and find out. They used to occupy 17 local governments. They are now not holding any local government. They have uh, but resorted to holding some islands on the Lake Chad and uh, in indoctrinating young people, especially girls, roughing them up with explosives and sending them to uh, soft targets, churches, mosques, marketplaces, and motor parks. So really, our first uh, identified assignment of securing the country, we have uh, achieved some success. The economy, we are very lucky. God has heard our prayers. The rainy season were good, the last two rainy seasons. We made fertilizer are, are available and some of the inputs, and we have virtually achieved food security. Still, sir, talking about the last four years, what have been the regrets, your frustrations, things that still worry you about your actions or inactions as president? Well, my frustration is that we cannot uh, uh, move faster in prosecution and punishing the really big corrupt. We made some progress. We recovered... Uh, uh, a number of assets, fixed assets, and uh, uh, money in banks, including in Europe uh, and America. But uh, under this system, you can't be too much in a hurry. Uh, even if you see, including using whistleblowers, you have to report to the police, the police to go through the rigmarole of uh, a full investigation before prosecution. That's, that's, one of this, that, that's my biggest frustration, really. What lessons would you say you have learned so far dealing with politicians and political office holders in the course of discharging your responsibilities as president? Well, everybody is uh, mindful, firstly, of his immediate uh, constituency, that he 
or she continues to impress his constituency that he's doing very well. But um, uh, the frustration, as I said, is, is taking too long, you know, by my own hope, uh, you know, to see that people are punished, uh, as those who have uh, 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 frustrated the economic development of the country. Because what resources we have been getting in terms of revenue, we ought to have been putting it into the infrastructure, the roads, the rail, the power. Uh, and that will uh, enable innovative Nigerians, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, to go about their own businesses. But when the infrastructure is lacking, there isn't much uh, they can do. In the build-up to the 2019 elections, the so-called Nigerian elites, as you used to call them, campaigned vigorously against your election. Did you feel betrayed? No. I always knew that... Uh, uh, the so-called Nigerian elite, they, they want to impress on the population, on the majority of Nigerians, that they do dictate the terms uh, to governments at all levels, center, state, and local government. But uh, we understand very well, I don't forget, I, I contested three times before I won the fourth time. And uh, in each case, 2003, 2007, and 2011, I ended up after the Supreme Court. So really, uh, I understand Nigerian politics. But I found out that the elite uh, are just for themselves. They are just man. That's why I didn't so much bother about uh, what they feel and what they threaten they could do. And uh, I'm very pleased that I proved myself right. I hope they, they will appreciate uh, uh, what sacrifice Nigerians have been making uh, to make them to continue enjoying uh, uh, the position they have achieved, either materially or politically. Um, I think they should be thanking the rest of Nigerians because uh, Nigerians, the majority of them haven't trusted me, they voted me overwhelmingly. And uh, I mentioned it once or twice that uh, what gave me a lot of satisfaction was when I visited all the states, 36 of them, including Abuja, and the people that turned out to listen to me and to see me are more than what anybody could buy or force uh, to come and see me. So I felt that. Uh, uh, Nigerians uh, really understood me and uh, they, are, they were backing me. And that was proved subsequently during the elections. Yeah, people were wondering before the elections, you never for once expressed doubt over your chances of winning the last elections. And you won with 15.1 million votes. What gave you so much confidence? Yes, yeah, I'm confident because, uh, as I told you, I saw the sign that Nigerians understood me. And I reminded you just now, don't forget, I tried three times, and uh, it's only the fourth time I won. And there was no local government I have been visiting in this country, no talk of states. Local government, 774 local government between 2003 and 2011, I visited all the local governments. And most of the time, you know, I, I went to, uh, by road or I used boats. Very few places I go by, by, by air because uh, I was on my own there. So recently you were quoted to have said that the relationship between the executive and the Eighth National Assembly wasn't the best. To what will you attribute their uncooperative attitude? I think a culture was developed in the National Assembly that they should dictate the terms. I think which was wrong. It is the executive that dictates the terms and take it before the legislature that will examine it and agree or disagree with it. But when they go around uh, posing that they are the government and not the executive, then that, that's a problem. And uh, I'm afraid I, I felt that, uh, and I spoke personally to the, uh, the Senate President, Saraiki, and the leader of the house, Dogara, they could not deny it. I told them, how do they feel 
to hold the country at ransom for seven months without passing uh, a budget. So for seven months, were they thinking, I say, they were, personally, they are not hurting me, they are hurting the country. So really, in terms of patriotism, I think I rated them very, very low indeed. Has that affected the performance of your government? Yes, well, but there's a constitution. There are things that they ha that have to go through them. There is nothing I can do. But to hold a budget for seven months cannot be justified if you really bother about a country. Okay, so Mr. President, security is still a major challenge. Despite the fact that you have degraded Boko Haram as promised, kidnapping for ransom is still an issue that is now threatening the peace of the country. How personally do you feel about that? I feel very bad indeed because there is a failure of neighborhood security in the sense that those who are perpetrating these uh, atrocities against communities and against the uh, states and the country, they come from somewhere in Nigeria. Their neighborhoods know them. And we have traditional rulers. Then, of course, the police are in the front line. The police in, in every major town and city in this country. As I said, they were not given the uniform and the rifle to select to impress anybody, but to secure the people. In this, I think the community leadership and the police to some extent have failed, have failed this country. So what assurance can you give Nigerians on that? The assurance I can give Nigerians that I will continue to do my best. So sir, in the face of the prevailing security challenges, how will you describe the performance of the service chiefs and other law enforcement agencies? You see, one of my likes is that uh, I have gone through all this. Uh, I did virtually all the staff and command appointments from platoon. the 32 people or 36 or 40, whatever it is, to division. It was on record for a long time, I think, that I was the only officer in the Nigerian Army that commanded three out of the four divisions then. The fourth division in Lagos, the second division in Ibadan, and the third division in Jos. So um, the security relative to the time I was on command has really gone down. Um, I cannot claim to know what was happening after I left the military the way I left. But definitely, uh, uh, I didn't know person to person all the service chiefs that I picked. I depended on records and reports. And when we have a case of emergency, I don't think it's the time, you know, to start a uh, disorganizing or organizing the military or any law enforcement agency as such. You have to take your time to do it because these are institutions that they know their security more than every Nigerian defend on a strong center. We have no state police. We have no state army or air force or navy. So those people more no, more than ordinary Nigerians, that uh, the center has to hold for them to have security, both material and physical security. If they allow the center to collapse, automatically they are the one leaving. So are you satisfied with their performance? We understand you have given them all that they required. I'm used to very high standards. I told you I did all the commands and so on from second lieutenant to general, and commands all over. I'm still expecting more, but I'm thinking of what happened between 1990 and 2014. I suspected uh, a lot of things went wrong, including accountability and the efficiency of the military and law enforcement agencies. Mr. President, 
Last year, you have promised members of the National Working Committee of your party that you are going to expand your cabinet. That is yet to happen. Are you likely to do so in the next level? I have addressed uh, the cabinet. I said goodbye to them, at least for the four years uh, we were to attain by the 29th instant. Um, I still haven't discussed it with anybody. And you will not be the first person I will discuss it with. Okay, so what kind of people are you likely to have as ministers in the next four years? To begin with, when I addressed this cabinet, I said I am very pleased we didn't have any major scandal. I think this is a major achievement. And anybody who hasn't got any evidence against any minister, then people have to trust me which of the ministers I will retain, which ones I will say goodbye, and very sincerely too. I don't go beyond that because I haven't discussed it with anybody yet. So, sir, as you begin your second term in office, is there anything you intend to do differently in the way and manner you execute your mandate? I will try to make the police and the judiciary much more efficient. Um, as I told the police and told uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of people, the police are in the front line. As I said, there's no town where we don't get a police station. They are supposed to be the front line for law and order. The only thing closer to the people than the police are the neighbor food itself. People know in some communities, if people steal, they know from which family who stole it or which kind of criminal in the family. That's what I expect of Nigerian police to achieve. Absolute community security. To know the criminals around them so that they can straight away head for those who committed certain crimes and get them prosecuted. Well, it makes sense. We are making noise that we want people to come and invest their money. Who will bring his money when his general manager or his own will be abducted? So all those screaming for lack of jobs and so on because we are not attracting capital investment, they should blame them for not cooperating with law enforcement agencies to get the criminals along uh, among us, the abductors, you know, and the 419ers, they live with them, they know them. They can't accommodate them and then blame government for not building factories. The government, the government cannot build all the factories required and employ all the people and produce all the goods and services. What the government should do is to provide security and convince entrepreneurs, both from abroad and from land, to invest, to employ people, to produce goods and services. And what the ordinary people and what Nigerians should do is expose the kidnappers and the thieves, you know. So is it a confirmation that we are likely to see more of a General Buhari? Next level, well, I don't know what you make of me, but uh, if you... if you, you are going to be more ruthless. Well, all those who call me Baba Goslo, they will see whether I'm slow or fast. What does that mean, sir? It means that I will persuade the police and the judiciary to be hard. And when I uncover that they are not hard, I will try and trace who is responsible for the slowness in terms of commanders or police uh, from DPO up, upwards. The IG alone cannot do everything. He has to depend on commissioners. The commissioners have to depend on DPOs. One of your press singers, Marara from Kano, said, those who should run, should run. Is it a time, sir? Well, it's up to them. 
If they stay, they know what will happen to them. The others stay and behave themselves, or they better run. Okay, sir, what is your message to Nigerians as you start the last lap of your administration, and what do you expect from them? My message to Nigerians is they should please expose the criminals in their neighborhood to help the government clear the country and attract foreign entrepreneurs to come and invest into the country, to create factories, you know, employ people and produce goods and services. This is what will move Nigeria forward. You cannot accommodate criminals in your neighborhood and start blaming government, glibly blaming government that nothing is being done. People are, are deliberately stopping, stopping government from doing anything. You have been described differently by different people. Man of integrity, man of honor, incorruptible. Some simply say you are phenomenal in Nigeria's political landscape. How will you describe yourself personally? Who is Muhammad Buhari? Well, I... I like to start by praising teachers of my generation. I spent nine years in boarding school, three years in primary boarding, and six secondary school. Now I think they do five years or four, I don't know how many years. The teachers then, they were treating children and students like their own children. If you do well as a student, they praise you in the classroom and in the assembly hall, which is held daily, six times a week. If you misbehave, you will be plugged in front of your class or in the whole assembly hall. So the best out of you is brought physically and academically. You have to be well to survive. You have to do well, be doing well to survive. I was a class monitor. I was a junior prefect. I was a senior prefect. I was a head boy. I earned all those. And I know what I went through. But without good teachers, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So who is Muhammad Buhari? I think I went through hell throughout my career in the military. I was a lieutenant in Lagos during the first coup, 15 January 1966. And you, if you bother about Nigerian history, you read coup, counter coup, civil war, coup, counter coup, I was all in it, including in detention for three and a quarter years. So I'm fully qualified, you know, as a sufferer in Nigeria. So Your Excellency, Nigerians would like to know whether there's anything secret behind the remarkable way and manner people show you love, respect, and trust consistently since joining partisan politics in 2002 for free. Well, I think Nigerians for putting me under the microscope and seeing the way I came through. They knew I was a governor, now six states. I was in petroleum for three and a quarter years. I was a military head of state. Then I joined partisan politics. When the, when the uniform was removed from me, I tried three times ending up in the Supreme Court three times. And then I won 2015. And now constitutionally, I won the last time, the fifth time. So really, for somebody who has been in the field for 20 years, from bottom to top, I think uh, if Nigerians show respect or love for me, I'm grateful they appreciated my efforts. So there's not a secret about that? There's no secret about it. The secret is that I try to survive. So all those who are trying to survive, they better continue trying harder. Eventually they will succeed. It's a question of trying harder and harder. Finally, sir, 
recently you got some people confused when you visited Saudi Arabia. Confused about what? They saw you running. Yes. Try and understand uh, the performance of Hajj and Umrah. There is a certain place where we have to jog. That's all I was doing. I'm complying with the religious terms of doing the, the thing. And I'm begging God to lead me and make me succeed. And this is a place to do it. And I, I was doing it very hard. They were wondering, uh, how, how could the president be running like that? To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.